Hello everyone and welcome to another amazing charging curve and today the charging curve is about the Audi Q4 55 Quattro that's the all-wheel drive most powerful Audi Q4 that you can have 250 kilowatt it has an 82 kilowatt hour battery 77 kilowatt hours can be used 400 volt system and I charge the car at Ionity 8 to 90 percent we're going to look at the charging session then we're going to look at the curve and then we compare it to the brother cars or sister cars whatever you want to call it because I tested the new ID4 GTX and the newest uh, Skoda Enyaq 85X not the facelift version um, and they all should have the same charging curve and we're gonna compare it if it's really the same I preheated the battery and you cannot do that in the Audi Q4 with the button like in the ID4 GTX or, the Sk or like the Skoda Enyaq. So manually preheating the battery and then you see is it warm, is it uh, perfect for uh, DC charging, you cannot see that. Um, you just navigate to a charger and you hope it does it and the battery is perfect but you don't know. And I did it pretty early so I think it was okay. This charging curve is brought to you by Tronity. If you need a driver's logbook for your EV for work and you don't want to write all the data down by yourself, then Tronity is exactly what you need. Tronity connects to your car. A lot of brands are supported and in the app or in a browser, you can see all the data. You can see where did you drive, how far did you drive, where did you charge and how many kilowatt hours did you charge. And then you can specify was this for work or private. And of course you can do this for a whole fleet. If you want to know more there's a link in the description below. And here we have it. Like I said I started at 9% not 8 I'm sorry and right away we go up to 161 kilowatt and then it does something weird. It does jumps and it does this the whole time. I don't know I haven't seen this on other cars or other MEB platform cars. The peak in the jump would be 181 kilowatt without the jump it's 179 kilowatt. Now look at this the whole time up up down and it's 10 kilowatt or so but at 50% we still Still have 140 kilowatt but we'll see 100 kilowatts so underneath we get very early here at 60 percent but it will go up again look at this up and down up and down again so it stays at around 100 kilowatt for a kilowatt for a while but then we go down here now we are under 90 <laughs> maybe here now we're stable 80 kilowatt at 75 percent and at 80 percent we have 72, 71 kilowatt and it slowly goes down. We see we charged 30 minutes, 10 to 80 percent took 28 minutes, 400 volt is now reached at around 85, oh it went down from 400 to 399 that's weird, <laughs> uh, but at around 85 percent and I charged to 90 percent and that was it. And here we have the charging curve and as you can see it goes up slowly to the peak of 179 kilowatt because it was never it was in the swings where it was 181 and then it goes in steps a bit down and then here at 54 to 58 percent it goes down a bit faster stays at the 100 kilowatt then slowly goes down and at 81 percent it goes down a bit faster and then at the end it stayed at 33 kilowatt the whole time and we have a little dip in here so uh, I would expect a straight line here so that it's more uh, um, going down in the same way but we have a little dip. Hmm. And by the way you can have all of this data there's a link in the description below to this Google Sheet for all the charging curves that I've done so you can look at it and usually <laughs> usually it tells you here the time uh, state of charge at that time when I plugged in the power that it, I'm charging with at the charger of course and the kilowatt hours charged and here on the right see 10 to 80 percent and also in time how many kilowatt hours have been charged because this is for the comparison that I'm doing. Then we have the comparison here. In here I have the Audi Q4 55 with red, then I have the ID4 GTX in blue and the Skoda Enyaq 85X in yellow. And as we can see the other two cars had a bigger dip. 
So where this has a tiny little dip here, the others had a, have a big dip from 45% to 55% where the Q4 had it in there. So I'm pretty sure that the, since the rest is exactly the same, the, the others should be also in that uh, up here. So it, it should be the same thing. So I don't know what this was, the battery temperature, the charging network that someone else was also charging and couldn't get the charge uh, power here. I have no idea, but the Q4 is here on top of the others and then a tiny bit under uh, here in the back. But this could be that they got more power since they got less here in the front because this is very similar, those two, and then the Q4 is a bit on top. Interesting. And the times 10 to 80%, the Q4, 28 minutes, the ENIAC also 28 minutes, and the ID4, 29 minutes. But this is not perfectly accurate because you can't measure it uh, perfectly. Um, it could be 28 and a half minutes or so, or the other 28 and a half, and it's just 30 seconds difference. So it's not a big deal. And then we get to the kilowatt hours charged over time and they are also extremely similar like we think. I mean look at this, there's, there's a tiny bit difference here of the 50 minutes, that must be the dip and then a tiny bit at the end so it's nothing. So after 10 minutes when I look Audi charged 26 kilowatt hours, ID4 GTX 26.8 and the uh, ENIAC uh, as well. And here you have also have to think at what state of charge did I plug in at 6%, 9% did make, makes a difference. And so this is really fine. After 20 minutes we have the Audi more charged for whatever reason, 47, well because it didn't have that dip, 47, uh, 0 0.5 kilowatt hours more. This is where the ENIAC is the latest. And then at 30 minutes we again very close, the ID4 had chest charged more and after 40 minutes uh, the ID4 is still and the, uh, the, the Q4 is the, the, the loser here but it's, it's one kilowatt hour after 40 minutes. I think that's really okay so you can really see it's the same charging curve, you get a good charging curve. Important with the Audi, the same as all MEB platform costs, plug in under or exactly 15% state of charge, then you get the perfect charging power. And of course preheat the battery or navigate to the charger that the car is preheating the battery. Um, if you don't do that, you don't get full charging power and you don't get that curve. So we see it's the same charging curve as we all also expected. That is great. Very sad that the Q4 doesn't have a manual preheating button for the battery. I heard somewhere that it should be coming. Um, I just don't get why it's not in there from the start as it was in ID7 for example. One and a half years ago when the car came up was the first car with the new motor and the new newest software with the new hardware and it had the preheating button. And the Q4 comes later, has now the same battery, same motor and uh, newer software and it doesn't have it. That's a bit sad. Uh, it should have that, it's just way easier or at least when you, preheat, uh, when you navigate to a charger that it tells you somewhere, I'm preheating the battery, I'm doing something, a symbol or anything, a message, something and then when it's done also. That will, it's just important and it's nice to know. If you want to follow me on Instagram, BetterLife1, and if you want to support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description below. And here on YouTube, there's also channel membership. And if you want to know what's happening behind the scenes, I have a third YouTube channel behind the battery. But that's it for me. Thank you much for watching. Have a great day and take care. Bye.